Have you ever needed to go through a large data set and manually find the number of occurrences of a particular item? Or have you ever wanted to set up a formula so as the data set is updated, you can have the information you need calculated and automatically updated? Keep watching and I'll show you how to do just that. We're going to cover the count, count a, count blank, count if, count ifs, and count unique functions. We have a fictitious data set of customers that contains their full contact information and order history. First we'll cover the count function. If we need to set up a count to keep track of the number of customers we have as more customers are added to the data set, we can use the count function only on columns that contain numerical values only. In this case, we can use the total order quantity, total order amount, or last order columns because the values in those columns are numbers. The other columns contain text, so the count functions will not work there. In that case, the count A function must be used. In cell B1, if we type equals, count, open brackets, and then select the entire total order quantity column by selecting the label K, press enter and it'll show you that we have 204 customers in our data set. Note that because the count function only counts cells with the numbers, it will ignore the header row and all the blank rows below the data set. Now, if we add new customer to the bottom of the data set, the customer count in cell B1 will automatically update from 204 to 205. This is how to use the count A function. If we need to set up a count to keep track of the number of customers we have as more customers are added to the data set, we can use the count A function on any column that contains any value. In cell B1, if we type equals, count A, open brackets, and then select the entire customer ID column by selecting the column label D, Press enter and it will show that we have 205 customers. But since the count A function counts any cell with a value in it, we have to subtract one since the header of the column in cell D1 should not be counted as a customer. To do this, we go back to our formula in cell B1 and add minus one at the end. Now it will show the proper number of 204 customers. If we add a new customer to the bottom of the data set, the customer count in cell B1 will automatically update from 204 to 205. Be careful when using this function because if the column that you've selected to do the count on has a blank cell, it will lower your overall count. As an example, if D5 was missing a value, the overall count in B1 will drop even though there is still a customer record in row 5. Next we'll cover the count blank. If we need to set up a count to keep track of the number of missing phone numbers, we can use the count blank function on the phone number column in column I. In cell B1, if we type equals, count blank, open brackets, and then select all the phone number data in column I, once you press enter, you will see that we are missing two phone numbers. If we add one of the missing phone numbers, we can see that the count in B1 will automatically be updated to one. This is the count if function. If we need to set up a count to keep track of the number of customers we have in a specific city as more customers are added to the data set, we can use the count if function on the city column. In cell B1, if we type equals, count if, open brackets, and then select the entire city column by selecting the label G, followed by a comma, then in double quotation marks type San Antonio, followed by a double quote, and then close the bracket. Press enter and it will show that we have three customers in San Antonio. We can change the function to reference cell A1 instead of typing out San Antonio. This will allow us to change the city name in cell A1 and automatically update the number of customers in that city. If we change cell A1 to St. Paul, B1 will automatically update to show that we have two customers in St. Paul. If you want to see how to use a drop down list, check out the video card on the top right hand corner of the screen now. This is how to use the count ifs function. If we need to set up a count to keep track of the number of customers we have in a specific state, and have ordered more than $10,000 worth of product, we can use the count ifs function on the state and the total order amount columns. In cell B1, if we type equals, count if, open brackets, and then select the entire state column by selecting the column header label H, followed by a comma, then in double quotation marks type Texas, followed by another double quotation mark, then comma, and then select column L for the last order quantity, followed by a comma, and then another double quote, greater than equals double quote ampersand, which is the symbol above the seven key on most keyboards, 10,000, then close the bracket. 
Press enter and it will show that we have 16 customers in Texas with total orders greater than or equal to $10,000. We can change the function to reference A1 instead of typing out Texas and reference A2 instead of typing out 10,000. This will allow us to change the state name in cells A1 and automatically update the number of customers in that state with orders over $10,000. Now, if we change A1 to North Carolina, B1 will automatically update to show that we have 10 customers with over $10,000 in orders in North Carolina. If we want to increase our threshold to 15,000, we just have to update the value in cell A2 and we'll see that there are eight customers in North Carolina with orders over $15,000. And finally, the count unique function. If we want to set up a count to keep track of the number of cities that we have customers in, we can use the count unique function on the city column. In this case, the city column is in column G. In cell B1, if we type equals count unique, open brackets, and then select the entire city column by selecting column G, Press enter and it will show that we have 91 cities in our data set. Since we've included the city header in our selection, we need to subtract one from the formula so it will return 90, which is the correct result. If we had selected G2 to G as our selection, we wouldn't have to subtract one since the header is not included. If you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe by hitting the Tip Bytes logo on the left hand side of the screen. We release new content every day. For other helpful videos, check out the suggestions on the right hand side of the screen.